Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing from a start to finish project. Some of you had suggested they like to see uh, what it takes to get one from the head to the toe. And also we're going to be painting this guy. This is Chuck Roast. He's holding a flower here. And uh, later on we're going to put a resemblance maybe of a skunk tail hanging out of his back pocket. Just telling a story. Your carving should tell a story. And so we're going to be working from this. This is a rough out. And uh, so we're going to start here on this guy, and we're going to do this and uh, do the head area first. And so we're going to get our glasses on, and then our glove here is already on. And we're going to take our V tool here, and we're going to come in, and we're going to start removing um, some of this waste here underneath here, separation for the hat to fit to the head or the head to fit to the hat. And so we're going to do some roughing out here a little bit and getting our V tool. Get the biggest tool you can, um, whatever it's a V tool or a U gouge or whatever it is, to come in here and remove a lot of this waste. And so we're coming underneath here, underneath the um, beard here with our V tool and the largest one you can find that you have in your uh, toolbox or tool caddy. All right, then we're going to come right to the back of the head here, and we're going to um, outline the, the hat where it be laid on its shoulders a little bit. And again, always pay attention where your tool is heading. All right, and let's go one more round here. Sorry my hand gets in the way, but I need to have control there. And uh, So we're going to take our V tool here again. And don't go any deeper than what your tool is made for. <laughs> and I'm recessing this back and taking this away. And I'm coming up here a little bit using the side of the V tool also is a great using this tool for a couple of things not only to outline but also to carving the sides of his hat down by using either the left or right wing of the tool. See how nice and clean that makes that in there when you use your V tool like that. And again when you come to a curve you may have to lighten up because you don't want to dig too much into as you start the corner, as you start going around the curve there, excuse me. And so just continue working away um, and getting a little bit of that waste removed. Okay, that's pretty good for an error, just to kind of give you um, an idea how we outline something. Now we're going to take our knife here and we're going to create that 90 degree angle. And I come in here and I even remove the nose that I put on there because I like changing things up. So again we're just putting that 90 degree angle and you can see when I say a 90 degree that should be a ridge right there you should see and do if you possibly can. Okay, turn your wood, turn your wood, turn your wood. And so as you're carving, always think about where that tool is going and what purpose you're using that tool for. Okay, let's come in here now and let's create, now again, taking our pencil, I'll show you right here is a center line. And really, it goes all the way down to the to the to the bot or to the right to the his shirt and chest area right down to his legs. So that is your dividing line, so to speak. Okay, so we're gonna come in here now and come in and put in our eye planes. All right. And Again, 
again, we're going to come here now and using our knife, making our stop cut right there, using a rocking chair cut and coming right in there. Okay. All right, now we're going to take our U gouge and we're going to create the bridge of the nose and also to open up the eye area. Taking our little U gouge here and putting those cuts in. Coming out here to the side where you went in with your U gouge, start right there and go carving straight in toward the eye and this opens up the eye plane. Come outside here <clears throat> of the U gouge cut. Make your cut here with your knife. Going right in toward this eye area. So right in here is going to be where your eyes are going to be at. Working his face over. Taking our V tool now, we're going to come in and clean up underneath that hat there a little bit. So if you ever want a short nose, you just keep taking, you know, away wood. So if you want longer, come out here, down here, and then if you don't like it, then you shorten your nose as you take more off. So that might help you there. Uh, to creating a short nose and we're going to turn it we're just tweaking things here now we're going to separate using our 3 16th soft V and go right up through there show separation we're not carving a werewolf got to have a separation there in the eyebrow area. All right, we're going to take our V-tool and cleaning this area out right here underneath the brim of the hat and the forehead. You know, you could even put a patch of hair in here if you wanted to later on. We might even do that later. I don't know if time allows. All right, so we're gonna come in here now and come in and put our small lines. I'm gonna put some short ones in, see how that looks. Make our stop cut here at the corner of his nose. Come in and remove that waist. Okay, I'm going to turn again. I'm always turning my carving. That's a good thing. Start here at the bottom of your smile line. Work your way up to the nose where the, the crook of the nose would start. All right, so we're working from, we want our three planes. Okay, there's one, two, and three. And everything on our body is divided up in threes, pretty much. Connect our small lines to the crook of the nose there to create the crook of the nose. And then later on, we'll actually put the crook in with a little V-tool. But I'll just, we're just blocking uh, this guy out right now. And now, again, if his head, as you can see here, is a little wide... And so for that to fit up into the hat more, we're going to take off both sides, of the wood, this waist, to create the temple area. And so I'm going to take my knife here and I'm going to make a swoop cut starting high and then working my way low and come out. Try to show you that there. See the difference between those, this cut here and, and doing nothing over here. So we're going to do the same thing over here, pretty close to it and just taking your time through here making that cut taking your v-tool
Okay. All right. We're going to now um, to work on this dental mound, the mouth plane, get it more distinct. Again, we need to visit this area quite often because this is what gives the shape of our face is the teeth that sits behind the upper lip. And so we're going to take our pencil now and we're going to put in the top lip. And this guy, he's out, you know, um, delivering a flower to his friend, girlfriend, or maybe it's his wife. And um, or maybe it's to his mother for Mother's Day coming up, you know. So um, we're going to take our V-tool here now, about a one-eighth V-tool, and we're going to put in that top, carve in that top lip. And he's sort of got an expression there a little bit. Okay. I'll make our swooping cuts here. We're going to put a lip in here in a minute. And I'm using a knife here, and I'm breaking up this beard, because this will be a help to you whenever you're doing uh, creating light and creating ridges and shadows and things. All right, so let's put in some eyes. I'm going to turn them upside down just a second here to get a look. All right, now I want to show you something here that might help. This is why I turn my carvings upside down. But this nose, this side of the nose needs to be taken down. It does. I want to match this side. Uh, so I'm going to come in here, and we're going to take it off just a little bit. Now, oh, take a little off. Don't take a whole lot. Remember, three chips are better than one big one. And... Again, I'm going to turn him upside down. Oh, yeah, that looks much better. So learn to carve. Excuse me. Learn to carve, yes, but also learn to, to turn your carving upside down every which way you can to make sure that everything is still in perspective. Okay. All right. Now we're going to clean up this area right here, and then we're going to start putting in our draw in our eyes, our upper eyelid, excuse me, not our eyes. We might have him looking off into space that he's thinking about his girlfriend or maybe he's thinking about his wife, you know. And so, however, when you create that pupil after a while. All right, so now we're going to come using our V-tool to outline the upper lid, the first line, okay? All you're doing is tracing. Trace right over that pencil line. Again, when you get to the corner, lighten up, and then come right out of that corner. All right, let's jump across the bridge of the nose, do the same thing over here, using our thumb as we're pivoting. I'm going to turn him where I can get this inside cut there. Now, if it's easier for you to, to come in and do a little bit each time, as far as carving the eyelid, then do so. If you don't want to do it in all one cut, that's fine. There's not, there's not a book out here that says you've got to do it a certain way. Again, now we're going to do six cuts to each eyeball. And so we're going to do, let's do the, to my left to his right. Let's do these three cuts on this corner. Okay, make it a chip. Come at the one and two and three. Let's look at that eyeball. All right, now we're going to tweak this bridge of this nose because the deepest part of your eye is next to the tear duct and next to the nose there. We're going to drop this nose down just a little bit. All right, let's come in and do the other side now. Three cuts, one and two and three. I'm going to turn my wood. 
do the three cuts here one and two and angle it and three there's your three cuts all right so now we're going to take the very tip of the knife and we're going to put it right here in the corner and make a cut right on top of that eyeball and I'm sinking that eye back into the socket better and I'm just taking again the tip of that knife and bringing that eyeball see the difference the shadow that's created there I like that so let's do the same thing over here or at least make an attempt to stop cut on top of that eyeball using the very tip of the knife and again, folks, this is about practice. You may not get it the first two or three times. Just practice until you're satisfied with the results. That is what matters. All right, very good. Now, we need to deepen uh, the bridge here just a little bit more. And we're going to do so like so. All right, let's do the bottom eyelid and start from the outside, working our way in, holding on to your wood and making that cut for the bottom eyelid there. I'll turn him around where I can get a better look at him, more control. Coming in and making that cut there putting in the crow's feet <sighs> okay now we're going to um, take our pencil here and again I'm going to show you because right in here is where the this is this needs to be sunk in a little bit better to make to give it that head to go up into that hat better all right so I'm going to take my knife here and make a small cut right there I'm taking my knife and I'm going to do that again And we're sinking in the temples, what we're doing, but also, too, we're creating part of the beard. Now, we're not putting no ear on this guy. It's, his hat's covering up his ears, really, uh, to a point. But you can see the difference there between how this looks so much more natural than this would if we left this like it is. So, again, we're going to come over here and we're going to put this cut in right there. Okay, don't get too crazy there with your cut. But then we're going to come in here now and make a swooping cut. Always pay attention where that knife is going. Okay, let's turn him and look. That needs to go just a little bit more. All right, I like that. I like that. All right. Woo, we made it there, didn't we? Yay. That's always good. Again, I'm coming in here and I'm just doing a rolling cut, creating the eyebrow bone area. Eyebrow bone of the ear. This area of his head. Okay, now we're going to take our soft V and we're going to put in the bottom lip. And again, always start big. You can always go small. And then tuck that in just so. Go right up and meet that small line. Let's go right up here. Do the same thing. You say, Van, that lip is way too big. No, it's not. It is just fine. Now, we're going to take our knife. And we're going to make a stuck cut. Again, watch... 
that you put just the tip in as you're going because as you get closer to the cheek over here, if you're not careful, the other part of the knife is going to hit the cheek and you're going to mar it. So just try to back off as you're coming in for a landing there a little bit. And so there, I'm going to put another cut. I don't feel comfortable there. Uh, with those two cuts, I'm going to put a third cut in and cutting that fibers of that wood. Okay, so now I'm going to take my knife, if I don't throw my knife away, and I'm going to open his mouth up. Just like so. Stuck my knife in about where that, that first plane is right there. And just lightly go in here and just come out. Now see, look how that opened that mouth up. Give him expression. Okay. And uh, so we're going to come in here and try to open the mouth a little bit more. See, that's why you want to make good stop cuts in there. <clears throat> that way it's easier for you when you're carving, opening up the mouth, that all that's going to come out pretty easy. <sighs> okay, so now let's take this knife and drop this bottom lip down a little bit. <sighs> We're thinning that lip a little bit. See how we thinned it and how it looks now? It's going back underneath there a little bit. That looks better, much better. Okay. I'm working this down. Okay. Let's come in here and clean out these little fuzzies. And this is where you need to stop every. Some people they they don't, but it's good to stop and drop your tools. Again, I'm visiting this this mouth plane again, this upper lip. And thinning this down just a little bit. <sighs> but again, take care of your tools. It makes it a lot more fun when they're sharp and it's much safer. <sighs> and you're going to get better results. And then when you do paint this, in which we're going to paint this guy, we're going to go from head to toe, from carving to painting this guy. But whenever you're carving and your tools are sharp, it's going to be a lot easier on your brushes because it's working from a better, smoother surface to a certain point. Okay. Very good. Now let's take here and let's bring out the wrinkles there, the little wing, crow's feet. Okay. We're going to take our knife here. I want to adjust this upper eye brow area. I didn't get that a good cut in there earlier. It's a little, little thin. There we go. That's helping out. All right, so now this eye needs to be addressed just a little bit here by setting it back even a little bit more. Okay. Gonna come in here with our thinner blade and come in here and make that just a little deeper right there. Okay. I wander all over. All right, so now let's uh, 
let's kind of give you an idea. We're going to connect these, these cheeks a little bit. And you'll see we're going to try to get them pretty even if we can. And if you don't, so what? You know, we're going to... He's got some expressions going on here. Taking our V-tool, outlining his cheek. And one cheek is a little longer than the other. Again, that's just fine. We're going to come in and, and address that issue right there. Yeah, that helped it. Okay, now let's get in here. And work this over. All right, let's look him over a little bit here. Let's get rid of some of this fuzzies. Or fibers that won't let go in there. All right, so now we're going to, uh, let's do some nostrils. And since we got pretty much of the face there taken care of, let's turn them upside down <clears throat> and let's put in the nostrils. I always like to turn my project upside down because I can see the nose better. And put in the nostrils. And using my thumb to give the tool some foundation there. And you just take our knife and we just undercut And that's it about nostrils there. Okay, so let's let's um, this eye right here <clears throat> needs to be addressed just a little bit, and that's all it needed. Looks like it. It's just a little high right there. All right, so we're about ready to put in some eyebrows, <clears throat> and so um, we're going to feather this back. And then we're going to come in here with a, oh, an inch and sixteenths um, V-tool. And we'll come in and just take your time through here because your edge of your brows could break off. And so uh, you may have to revisit areas like that there. Clean them up. And let's go this way with... The eyebrows and follow the shape of the eyelid that you made as you're carving your hair on. Now again you don't have to carve your hair on but it, again it just gives you another um, another nice detail of your face if you put in things like that there it just gives your carving more a detail and more realism. Okay, let's work on this cheek here. I'm going to turn my stick around, or the carving around, and um, soften the features of his cheek here. help that so let's <clears throat> try to match this side here a little bit I'm using the back side of this number five you can even do it with a number three gouge it's just a little smaller all right so now we're going to put in the little angel kiss here and put that in right there that way all that can run downhill
Okay, let's, um, we're going to leave the hat alone for right now because if you get this too thin and you're holding this guy and you're trying to work on something, you could break off the, uh, the brim of the hat. So let's, um, let's work on the arm here and let's get some hand placement going here. And um, again, his, his hand is just going to be outside the pocket, just laying up against his, his thigh there. And again, always make your uh, hand placement larger because you can always make it smaller. So we're going to take our V-tool here. It doesn't matter what size you got. It's just whatever's handy. Reach for it. And start separating the sleeve. Now, one, sometime down the road, we'll, we'll do one maybe with a short sleeve shirt on and show part of the arm. And just kind of break that up. All right, so again, we're going to come in here with our V-tool. And we are uh, outlining looks like a mitt in a way and um, let's go in with a little larger V tool and put in the separation here Then we're going to take our knife and we're going to create the planes of the hand to where we can have finger placements here in a little bit. I go right down to I'm almost touching the jeans or the overhauls here. Now we're going to uh, you know, take this down, the leg part of this. It's a little too high there. But we need to put a thumb in. And again, when you're at thumb, it comes down to about, you know, almost now mine, it... it, it almost equals with the first knuckle you come to so that might help you if you're trying to lay out a thumb about where to about about where to put your thumb at <clears throat> okay the hand's going to take a little work here so we're just going to work this guy down Now, I know I'm turning them every which way, but to get the angles I need to make the cut, I've got to, got to turn him. And I don't want to stand on my head to carve. All right, so we're setting this back a little bit. We're creating the four planes to the hand. You know, you only draw three fingers or three lines to represent the fingers. Cutting this back here because the thumb doesn't go underneath the cuff. It just kind of fades off into the wrist there. So let's uh, let's remove some of the wood off the side here. And then, of course, we need to take a little bit off here where it goes into the wrist. <clears throat> well, the hand starts going when the hand and wrist meet. And we'll take off that round edge there. Okay. Turn that thumb toward the body a little bit. OK, 
Okay. Now we're going to take our pencil and again from this from the arm here everything has a center and so I just kind of draw in so that's going to be the middle of his hand right there and you'll come over here and you're going to put another line and another line so there's one two three and four and you see well man that's awfully wide over here that's okay again make your hands and fingers wide and we're going to downsize all these things start separating them showing some knuckles things like that there so you're going to undercut that just a little bit there Now when you get done with the hand, you always too want to remember to bring this arm down to where it's not sticking so high up from the hand there. All right, let's look at it. It's not too bad looking. And now let's take our V tool here and let's show separation now. Remember, only draw three lines to represent the fingers. And if you draw four, then you're going to have five fingers. Doing the hand takes a little time. And uh, of course, now when we come over and do the flower, of course, you're not going to see all everything of the hand like you do here. <clears throat> all right, let's um, bring this leg down a little bit here to get rid of some of that thickness there. Let's be safe about that and push away from us. All right, we're going to split the fingers now, put a stop cut in, in between. And then we'll adjust the fingers accordingly the best we can. So when you're looking at your hand, the littlest finger is very short. It comes right behind this, the first knuckle there of the ring finger. And so we're going to come in and we'll just take the little tip of that off. Gravitate that down just a little bit there. All right, then the ring finger, of course, is going to be, it's a little bit longer, but uh, we're going to put that cut right there. And then we're going to leave the middle finger alone because then the, the finger that you point with, we're going to bring that in like so. All right, so then I take my knife and I start shaping these fingers. And... So, they look a little blocky, that's okay.
course he's a farmer or hillbilly his hands are going to be rough they're not going to be smooth dish water dish type dish pan type hands so um now to um the show here right about in here is going to be the knuckles all right and so when your hands relaxed you see these little gaps that you have and at least in my hands um, but as children there as as we grow as our bones grow the children's their hands are really tight you can barely see through them but on adults hands you can start seeing gaps in between your fingers things like that all right but we're not going to put we're not going to see see through all his the, we're just putting in these cuts here to represent separation and we're going to start turning trimming and just take off little bits start rounding those fingers all right all right now i'm going to come to this side He's a hillbilly, not too many fat hillbillies out here, so he could probably be a skinny, kind of a medium built guy. Okay, so right in here, I'm going to erase our pencil lines. And then we're going to take a U gouge. And we're going to be putting in these soft areas in between the fingers. And I'm going to do it from this angle here. Just show some indention in there. Soften that hand up a little bit. See there how that helped that so much. And then as you as you look at your hand, of course every hand's different. My hand's a little older, but um, you, this, you have these veins going through here and all these soft areas. So in these places right in here, they kind of dip down. Well, let's do that back in here a little bit. And just just barely do it. Just show shadow of something going on there in his hands <sighs> yeah and you know if you really want to get we could put fingernails right here we might do that here after a while <sighs> and then of course then our thumb as it's laying against it kind of bends right there so we're going to take that and bend that fingernail down a little bit thumbnail excuse me And um, so if you wanted to, remember the, the, the uh, fingernail, you, you don't want to make them big, but they are round. Okay, they're not squared off. They're kind of a half moonish. And whatever V tool you can will fit in here. Uh, just don't go too deep because really that's... but it will add more realism to your carving. Round. Things off. Shave off some of the inner part of the thumb there. All right, let's have a gander at that. Yeah, he's all right. Not too happy there, but anyway, we're going to sink this in just a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit more. Okay, now we're going to get ready to do this other hand that's holding the flower. And so we're going to block out the flower here, but we're not going to do the actual flower itself until later on. Um, so we're just going to take our V-tool here and outline. The petal part of the flower.
Okay, and that's about all I'm going to do there. Okay, so now we're going to um, come in with our V tool, separate the sleeve from the hand there a little bit. Now you'll notice he's, he's holding the stem there, and so right about there is where we're going to put a cut right here to show the hand here holding the stem but also the flower is resting on top of the hand and so um, we're going to take our knife and block in And right about here is going to be where his thumb is. Now his thumb's going to be hidden. All right, so you don't have to worry about showing this thumb because the flower is so big that it's it's over, it's taking over the thumb. But but again, if you want to, you can go to that trouble and do all that if you'd like. But I, I'm not going to. All right. Now again, when you're holding an object in the hand, I've got to come down here a little ways with a stop cut and um, make a cut right here where you can kind of see what's going on here to get, remove some of the waste there where you can see what's going on. Give me just a minute here and we'll proceed to the other to this hand all right so taking our pencil again right about here is our middle line for the division of the fingers all right and then we're going to take our V tool So they call this a parting tool. You're parting the wood. And we created those planes. There's four planes to a hand. And then um, we need to start rounding things here a little bit. All right, now we're going to put our stop cuts in. Again, always remember when you take wood off from the sides and you're trying to put a cut in here, be careful. To, sometimes that wood will give away if there's nothing to hold that piece in. So take your time through here. All right, let's turn and look at him here a little bit. Okay, so let's start putting some separation. Then I'm going to come in here and create the fingertips by making that cut there. Wish there was some way we didn't have to turn it so much to where, but until someone comes up with a better way of doing it, well, this is the only way I know how to do it. Keep turning to get where you need to be. All right, so now we need to, need to soften that up a little bit. And again, we're going to come in and put in these soft features. And we need to come in here and 
put that flower stem underneath. Now this stem's gonna be pretty, you know, it's not that thick. So we need to kind of thin it down. Cause it looks like he's holding a club or something there right now. And you know, later on when we, you can always take it and kind of, you know, twist it a little bit to kind of give it some action, the stem itself. Okay, so this hand, we're going to call it good for now. And again, you always have to come back in and and tweak it a little bit. But again, don't be afraid to, to do that, all right? All right. I'm gonna come in here and work on that hand part and the stem the flower a little bit there. And then just downsize these knuckles a little bit. And if you want to, of course, you can put the little lines that goes across the knuckles there if you want. All right, so we've uh, worked on the face today and the hand placement. And so the next time we meet, uh, we will work on uh, getting the flower in and the stem and on the chest area of this carving. Well, thank you for watching today and happy carving and we'll see you soon.